Hello there. Welcome to the World Cafe podcast. This podcast has been designed with created content that centers on the power of words. Can we really do anything without speaking? Can we really do anything without the agency of words? Yes, that is what this podcast is all about. And I am your host, Amakri Isobe, your neighborhood word trader. I believe in the power of words, for it is the unit of creation. I trade in words to profit my world. Hello there. It's always a pleasure when we come into the space and know that you are there. How are you all doing? Yes. I have not forgotten. We will start with that. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good everything. How are you all doing where you are at this particular instant? I'm doing great where I am. You know, like you know, we always uh, come into this space. And if that we come in, it's so exciting. I call it my safe space. How are you? Well, the weather is cool and calm where I am. A little bit uh, cloudy. We're having rains here and there, but can't complain. Beautiful. So what am I doing today? You're seeing it on the screen, doing business in Pidgin English. I came across this individual, you know, and uh, a wonderful personality, I must say. She has a unique style, you know, and she has embraced it with her whole heart. And she goes all out. Who is this person? Well, I'll say one or two things about her, then I'll bring her on and we'll begin the show from there. Her name is Victoria Oyechi Obonashi. You know, she describes herself as Vicky. You know, I like the way she, I mean, she spells it, you know, Vicky. You know, and she's an international trade and logistics analyst, a business strategist, training facilitator, living and lifestyle writer. She's, 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 she's amazing. You know, but what caught my attention is her style of writing, you know, when it comes to business, pidgin English, you know, from this part of the world, Nigeria, West Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, you know, there's this language. It's it's like it binds all of us together when we talk, when we come together. We It's English, but not spoken like the regular English. You know, we call it either in our palates call it broken English or pidgin English and she has embraced this and she's making so much out of it in terms of communicating business wise enough of this I know you want to hear her voice I know you want to see her face and I'm going to bring her on now where is she where is she and (laughs) hello Victoria hi (laughs) good to have you on the show today uh, Thank you so much. Yes. I, before I brought you on, I know you heard me at the background, you know, telling my audience who this wonderful personality is. But I'm going to allow you to do all the introduction. Who is Victoria Obona? Why should we even, you know, like want to hear from this individual? You have the floor now. Okay. So, like you rightly said, my name is Victoria Oyechi Obona. And, um, <laughs> well, let me introduce myself uh, professionally. I am an analyst, as you rightly said, an international trade and international logistics analyst. And I'm also trained in um, incident investigation and root cause uh, analysis as well. Mm. I've also been a a freelance business person. I have been a a product distributor for Bates Powder and um, I'm also, I've also uh, done a bit of network marketing and I am also a certified training facilitator Mm. I have trained people in business processes as well as in um, uh, um, work processes as well. So um, right now, I am a Pigeon English business coach, translator, mm. and an author as well. Wow. So um, uh, 
whilst uh, doing all these things, I have also learned that I, as much as I love to deal with numbers, naturally I'm a numbers person but okay. I have also learned that I've, um, I've also learned to find my expression in words that's why yeah. I started writing like you said I'm a, been a lifestyle writer and um, I have also followed that I have developed the keen in desire to help people mm. you know with simple solutions I like simple solutions i find mm. fulfillment when i can help people improve their lives improve their businesses or careers or lifestyle with very simple solutions and that's why um, i've also come into this space because it's the simple it's a simple English in, in Nigeria. So that's, uh, that, that has also brought me to the space of um, doing business in Pigeon English. Yeah. yeah beautiful, beautiful. So that's about now, me. You are, you, are, you, are, you are so many things at the same time. You know? <laughs> like you, you're, you're a bunch of, should I say, energy. And each, each step, each, excuse me, each step you're taking is like you're just revealing you know those energies and what have you it, it, it's beautiful now yeah. like like i like i said at the beginning of the show what caught my attention when i came across your profile and what you do mm -hmm. it's the pigeon english you you know now before now you you just hear people do say things and when you break into that atmosphere and they look at you like no this person is not educated for expressing himself or herself <laughs> in in pigeon english and all that but i mean the way you have you, you've taken it far from i mean far from it tell me why have you decided to 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 like should i say build something within this space doing business in pigeon english why okay um well i as you said for those of us who were born in nigeria i was born in nigeria i've lived in nigeria all my life I've um, had my first three levels of education here in Nigeria I've worked with um, I've worked in, in corporate world and in business as well so uh, and I've lived in I've lived in at least um, four out of the six um, geopolitical zones we have I've interacted yeah. with people of different tribes and languages and one thing I can tell you for sure is that in as much as English language is our official, um, is our official language, mm. Pigeon English is our unofficial native language. Yes, like we all that. have our natives. Yes, we all have our native languages, Hausa, Igbo, Yoruba, Ijo, Epic, and all that, mm. but Pigeon English is our unofficial native language and it's interesting that pidgin english gets into every class mm. of discussion even when you whether you're, you're talking with somebody on the road or you're inside a first class flight you will still get to hear somebody say something like guy how far how, How you far did. are you doing? <laughs> those are those are those are those are those are common things we say to ourselves. So, and you know, the interesting part of Pigeon English is that it's a very relaxing, it's a very relaxing um, language. You know, it mm. eases up the tension when people are conversing, mm. and you know, when when people are conversing, they. If it's not it's it's not a language that when somebody is talking to you, you feel threatened, like oh, I'm going to sleep in what I'm going to say. No, mm -hmm. it's when people are speaking English, they are bothered about 
their grammar, structures, whether it's exactly. correct and all that, whether they're using the right tenses or mm. the right pronouns or adjectives. And in a bit to, you know, um, make sure they are in the right tenses, some people end up not saying what to say so that mm. they don't make a mistake <laughs> or they just uh, let it they, they keep quiet and mm-hmm. assume, you know, the assumption comes in because yeah. they don't really understand what you're saying, but they don't want to appear not to understand, mm. you know, what you're saying, you know. And this, this, this kind of um, got me, uh, you know, when I, I started observing that, okay, if, um, if people want to, for instance, if you travel, I, I live in Port Harcourt. If I travel to a place like um, Jaws, or you're in, if you're I go in, to... You're in, my, you're in my city then. <laughs> I thought you live in Abuja. <laughs> yeah, no, I, when I mean you're in my city, that, that, that's, oh, my, your home that's state, my city. Oh, your home state, yes. That's my home state. <laughs> yes, I know that. <laughs> of course I know that. Well, anyway, the thing is, you know, when when people uh, even people feel that okay, when they get when they get on the street, when they get to a place, they that is still new to them. You know, on the road, like you want to board a bus, they they feel somehow like if you speak proper English, these people feel scam you. So you see that you see that laid backness. So when you when you get to a new place, you want to come down like as an oh, are they go so so and so place? Mm-hmm. Uh, if you show me road, or yeah. you know, you want to blend with the people, and the only language you can actually use to blend with these strangers you've just met is speaking English. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and also, I also uh, I began to observe too because I I do I do training uh, facilitation so and I also I I also attend you know a lot of um, trainings as well and listen to people speak at events both virtually and physically so I I also began to observe that when. A facilitator or a speaker at a conference is talking, you know, and he cracks a joke. He cracks a joke in mm-hmm. English language. The the number of people who laugh the response at the joke, is, the response is low, like it's, it's not, 30 it's not, to 40%. It's not organic. It's not, yeah. Some people, some people are slow in catching and catching the, the the joke, you know. But when he cracks a joke, or when he or she cracks a joke in Pidgin English, everybody erupts in laughter. Hello. You hear everybody laughing, and, you know, the whole hall is catching the vibe, you know. Yeah. So I'm like, that's simply because more people connect with the language the mm-hmm. person has just spoken than the English language he used initially. Mm-hmm. And then when I also checked, I also began to check the um, the music industry. When you okay. look at the, particularly in the secular music industry, which is mm-hmm. bigger in Nigeria, you mm-hmm. get to see that most of the songs done by artists in in, that, that the whole the entire songs are in proper English. They don't mm-hmm. get that, you know. They don't. They are not so popular. Meanwhile, the ones that are done in Pidgin English with a blend of one native language or the other, or the other. those are the ones. Uh, those are the ones that get. Uh, they get the, the the audience listening and dancing, and everybody is playing it at every party. Mm. You know, those are the ones that top their charts. So it got me curious about, you know, languages and, you know, learning about languages. And in the course of that, I got a 
find I got to find out that I found out that um in Nigeria you know they say we are 200 I say we are 200 million Nigerians and in this 200 million Nigerians I was surprised to read that over a hundred million we have over a hundred million uh level one and level two speakers of pidgin english english hmm. that is the number of people who speak pidgin english either as a first or second language yeah. in nigeria it is higher than the number of people who speak any other native language is higher than the number of people who speak Hausa is higher than the number of people who speak Yoruba, Igbo and the rest. So yeah. if the only number that is higher is the number of people who speak proper English, you know. Okay. And that that got me thinking like if over a hundred million that is more than way more than half our half population. Yeah. Yes. speak pidgin english you know it as their first language or their second language it now made sense to me why any time the government has to make public announcements you know you mm-hmm. get to see them make they make the announcement like for instance during the last election and even like during covid and all that you know they, they make the announcement saying in English in Hausa in Igbo mm-hmm. in Yoruba and in Pidgin English yeah and you know the the if you check the banks and the telecom who mm. have the highest number of you know clients in a, across all industries they have the highest numbers because everybody either has a bank account or has a mobile phone. Yeah. They render services, they render services in English, Hausa, Igbo, Yoruba, and Pidgin. Mm-hmm. So if we have this number of people, that means there's there's a large gap somewhere. Mm. and it got me more curious to begin to search about the effects and the importance of language in learning you know and i found out you know that there are countries there are countries who don't teach in english in schools true they 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 teach in their own uh, local language that's the the language they speak officially and it's their local language it's yeah. the language that's local to them and i found i also found that those people because the language is something that is is the same in the classroom is the same on the street is the same mm-hmm. at home yeah they are not bothered about grammatical errors they are more focused on communicating information mm. which is the whole essence of education mm. the whole essence of education is to be sure that you're passing knowledge from one person to the next person and that that, that person is able to think through what you have informed them and use it positively you know and when i looked at that i began to ask myself what if what if when we went to school or right now in schools they begin to teach us uh, you know they or rather they taught us or they begin to teach children mm-hmm. math uh, subjects like physics and chemistry and they teach you in your local language mm-hmm. but here for instance like especially those who are in the rural areas imagine if they were being taught in their local language wouldn't the children there do better wouldn't they understand the subjects better i i think they would mm. actually understand the, the the principles you're trying to teach them in these subjects i think they would understand it better if you if you give them the chance to learn it in their local language because 
the truth is ability to speak English language is not a sign of intelligence. It's not, uh, it's not a sign of someone who is, uh, who is naturally intelligent because there are so many people who are doing amazing things across the world and they don't necessarily speak English language. So why should we put that barrier Okay. <laughs> in passing knowledge for our for our people. So it got me asking if for instance, you know, because I know some people would uh, some people would say uh, but English is our official language. We have to learn in English. We have been learning mm. in English and all that. And I ask myself is it's true that English is our official language. But it's not really our native language. Otherwise, for instance, when how many how many people get to take the IELTS and uh, smash it the first time? Mm. Most people take it like two three times before they finally get what they want. Then there's mm. so so much you know grammatical errors we make every day in English language and we don't even know that these things are wrong. Every day, you know, on social media, you get to see people saying, I am, and am, how to spell am, and I am. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's truly because, that's truly because it's not our, it's not our native language. Even the way we pronounce some things mm -hmm. tell us that it's really not our native language. Now, For instance, I I have never I have never heard some I I my native language is Igbo, mm -hmm. but I have never had the cause to tell someone oh uh, you shouldn't have uh, like you know the way we say in English if somebody says uh, she she went there yesterday you would say oh that English is bad you correct mm -hmm. the person you say she went yesterday uh, mm -hmm. but. I've never in my own language heard somebody speak it and it will be a grammatical error to be corrected. And I'm sure it applies in most, in most of our native languages. We don't correct people <laughs> in our native languages. So if we can, you know, do a whole lot with Pigeon English, yeah. why can't we do business with Pigeon English? For instance, if we if I'm going to buy something, I will not if I'm if I'm going to the market, I will not say uh, I will not go there and be saying, "Excuse me, ma'am, do you sell uh, tomatoes?" The woman will look at me, and that is the time the price of the tomatoes will be times two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if I go and I say, ah, "Madam, how much for your tomato?" Or you they sell tomato. Mm -hmm. She will tell me, oh, yes, and she will tell me the actual price, you know. So if we transact and we do everything at, in the real life in Pigeon English, so why can't we learn in Pigeon English? We should learn businesses, uh, learn how business is done in Pigeon English. Now, now, listening to you, uh, what I say, itemize and pour these things out. I hear you talk about the commercial viability of language. I hear you talk about sure. emo emotional intelligence in language. I hear you talk about diversity in language. I hear you talk about, you know, the economic uh, matrices that, you know, shapes and everything through languages. The question now is, I, I mean, are we matured enough to see that we can take Pigeon English and bring it into all of these things we have. I mean, I have itemized based on what you have submitted now, and we make it like uh, into our educational curriculum that we express it, that we, 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 we you know, we, we say you're going to be certified in English or something. So, I mean, in Pidgin English, you know, so that to make it, what I say, acceptable. Do you think we should go that route? Well, um, at this point, I would say Pigeon English 
cannot uh, and should not automatically replace English language. No, I would not say that. It's it's a language on its own. And the only challenge Pidgin English has is that Pidgin English uh, is not standardized like English language. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, you know, people can spell things differently. What is important in Pidgin English, what is actually important in Pidgin English is communication. Do you understand the point I'm trying to pass? Yes, Mm -hmm. I understand the point you're trying to pass. That's, That's the main thing that's important in Pidgin English. So yes, Pidgin English cannot replace um, cannot replace English language in schools. At least not just yet. I don't I don't even think it should. I don't think it should. What I would say rather is that we should have an option okay. of Pidgin English. Right. Those who who would uh, rather take you know, like who would rather be educated, those who want to learn in this language should be given the option because the true purpose of going to school is not just um, it's not just to learn. It's also to, to learn and to know how to use the information you have learned to improve so your life and to improve the society. So, given given the option, from what you're saying, is like we, we should have that. What I say, uh, option to choose, you know, to learn in the formal English or the Queen's English, as we want to call it, or we learn and grow our abilities in Pigeon English. You, it's 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 it's. I mean, it makes a lot of sense because even when you look at business opportunities coming from outside the country take for example the chinese we come to see that certain people go to learn mandarin now you know just to communicate sure. yes just to communicate yeah. and and all that and those who are also coming who have come to know that from the statistics you laid out having this number of people who are under yeah. say, the usage of english they go i mean pidgin english they go and learn pidgin english so sometimes you see a non-Nigerian communicate in Pidgin English and you're taking her back it's like oh, where is this person coming from but because <laughs> for the mere fact that the person want to, wants to communicate and at the same time transact yeah. business and all that so yeah. I, I think you, you, you have a point there but the question now is how do we go about it how do we bring that standard you know that accept is already, is already acceptable but how do we go about raising the bar for its acceptance in transacting formally. How do we go about it? Well, the the because the the primary theme for Pigeon English is communication. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be easy to standardize because if you're going to standardize the language, you're going to go back to English language. You're going mm-hmm. to go back to the issues we already have with English language. Mm-hmm. So what I what I feel is yes, it may not be um, a case of formal school. We have okay. we have informal schools. I mean, if if um, the if the what's it called the the Igbo system of uh, apprenticeship, apprenticeship can be studied. Yes, it can be studied in 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 Harvard for that matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To understand how it works, let's not forget that the guys who the guys who came up with this method of apprenticeship, and you know they developed it over the years and passed it down from generations to generations. These guys, they don't speak English. No, they don't. <laughs> they don't speak English. They don't. They uh, you know, they they, they, they communicate they, in the they local speak language. In the, in, the, in the local language or in Pidgin English. And they were able to educate themselves and create that system for themselves. So it's an informal kind of education. It doesn't replace, for me, it it, it doesn't replace the formal kind of education. It just gives room to those who 
struggle with the formal kind of education to be able to still gain knowledge from mm. experience i can tell you from experience there are people who will never understand certain business terms you tell them mm-hmm. there are people who will never understand it but when you begin to explain to them in pidgin english what these terms mean you'll be surprised they will be the ones telling you mm-hmm. they will be the ones giving you examples of mm-hmm. what you're trying to tell them tell them <laughs> you're, you're trying you're, yeah it, like for instance you're telling someone oh you're trying to explain something like um, uh, let's say negotiations to mm-hmm. what negotiation is to someone and you're telling the person oh it's it, you have you, you have to bring people on the board and all that the people have to talk about talk about uh, their benefits the way the, the mm. way the pros and the cons mm. they're going to look at you like okay some are going to even cram it if there's an exam they will mm. cram it so that they can pour it out and pass their exam Yeah. But in real life you want them to be able to use negotiation skills in real life until you come down and tell the person ah, negotiation is as simple as the price market shebi you the price market where you mm-hmm. go market they go tell you say the yam na 1000 you you go price at 600 they go say okay bring 900 you say no why i go pay 700 And you say okay, bring 800. You say no, na 700 last. And you say okay, no, na 8, na 800 last. When you explain it like that, the person understands what you, what negotiation means. Say, ah, he's like God, ah, he knows what negotiation is. Mm-hmm. He would definitely know that. But when you're talking about it and defining it in English language, it sounds <laughs> so big. You know, big and outlandish and so far. Yeah, but when you bring it down and explain in, you know, yeah. you're able to yeah. just understand what you're saying and then he's able to apply it because mm-hmm. that person now if you take him or her to uh, uh you know, you tell him oh, you, this is what you're going to do. I need you to negotiate with this client. I need you to go represent me in a meeting, negotiate with the client, tell the client this. He now understands what you mean by negotiation. So when he, when he, it's it's now in a corporate world, yeah? Mm. But it, it, he understands the principle is I'm trying to beat prices, mm-hmm. get the best deal for my company. Mm company yeah guess yeah. you know guess the get the best deal for myself as much as that person is getting the best deal for himself mm. you know but if there, there are people there are people who don't understand it that way and you know if you're somebody who doesn't understand what you're saying there are people who never ask questions they just assume and you tell the person go for, go to the meeting and negotiate uh, negotiate for me for, for us represent us well and the person gets there and he doesn't say anything he doesn't say anything <laughs> he just, you know he just takes whatever he said and brings back to you you get fled up meanwhile the point is he does not get how to practice practice what he knows he even knows mm-hmm. it already But mm-hmm. because of the word you the word you have called it he doesn't know that that's what you're talking about so that Beautiful. is why that that is why we need to start explaining certain business terms to people so that it's not about the things we cramped to pass exams a lot of people cramped things to pass exams mm-hmm. and of course after the exam the things flew away from their head <laughs> and now they are in the real world they are in business and those terms are coming up they don't even know how to infuse them into what they do daily but if mm. they have the, if they have the chance to understand this in their local language i tell you it makes it makes you know it makes it easy for everyone mm. it makes it Beautiful. easy for everyone beautiful so simplicity is is it's important in business too 
guys we have been discussing with victoria yes uh she prides herself in this space doing business in pidgin english and you will agree with me uh she, she has really opened our understanding and you know taking that taking us on that journey to see the benefits of doing business you know in pidgin english uh, i mean this is amazing so for if i allow her and we we continue here we will just she she will just keep going and going and going you know but it's amazing it's amazing don't worry, her don't thought, worry. Her, her thoughts on don't the, worry you, you would you would you <laughs> would get to i already have i already have my first business book in pigeon in the okay. works so it's in publishing at the moment Okay. Hopefully by next week it will be out mm. for purchase. So Beautiful. it's it's Beautiful. Uh, it's it's something I know a whole lot of people would love because Beautiful. it breaks down a whole lot of business terms, a whole okay. lot of business terms in PG English. So and it, it it comes with a whole lot of examples and you know how to even make calculations. Mm. you know basic calculations in in pigeon everything mm. is in pigeon so that you're able to connect it with it and able to infuse it into your normal daily lives amazing amazing that's beautiful <laughs> so where do we catch victoria if we want to catch her where do we if i want to hear more of or read more how do i get in touch with victoria Okay, you could get in touch with me on LinkedIn. My name is Victoria Oyechi Obona. MBA is at the end, so that you would know is me. Okay. <laughs> or you could catch with, catch up with me on Facebook. The name of Facebook is Vicky V I I K I I O N I N Y E Vicky O N I N Y E. It's the same thing with Instagram Vicky O N I N Y E. So that's that's those are the platforms where you could connect with me, and I look forward to connecting with you too. Ah, Thank you so much for Thank having me today. The pleasure is all mine. I, I mean, I I am so excited hearing that you even have a book in the works, as in within this. Oh yes. Let, let me say within this genre, you know. Of, yeah. of 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 writing and it's it's beautiful i, I mean yeah. we can do so much with it embracing it you know and going with it like you said not replacing rather having an option you know so option, it is yes. an option so i have an option i'm going in, i'm going into that space i can communicate i can i can be understood when i communicate because i have a group of people who also are uh, within this frame and within this should i say uh environment you know it, it is beautiful thank you so much for doing this doing this with us thank you guys <laughs> you will agree with me it's been an amazing amazing 20 minutes plus with uh the key as she calls herself you know and uh, go ahead <laughs> search, search for her on uh, on social media you 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 heard it I, i i mean i caught up with her on i mean on instagram and sorry on linkedin, on LinkedIn. I, the, the first time i saw her right up i was like okay where is she going with this and uh, <laughs> it was really interesting i must say and i just said no let me let's bring her here to also you know, share this idea and all of that thank you so much thank you thank before, you too before, thank before, you. before i let before i let you go what's the last word for my audience what's that message you want to share with the with my audience okay i would say one of the slogans i have uh, developed for this journey is what i will leave with you mm-hmm. and it simply says information we go help many people suppose mm-hmm. they in language where mm-hmm. they very simple for many mm-hmm. people mhm beautiful my people on i hear them now you suppose this yes simple. sir 
No, make it never can be too simple. hard. It's just and they simple. tell you. <laughs> they tell Victoria, you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Ah, guys, thank you too. You know how we say it on the show. This is the space where we come, yes, to lean on one another's what experience to forge a positive path. And today it's an honor. We have Victoria who has grown this ability and, cap- and competence within the space of bus- doing business in Pidgin English. And come on, guys, she shared with us. Yes, we can go ahead and do that. But you know how we say it on the show. Time is no longer, I mean, it's not always our friend. But what do we do? We will come again. <laughs> Till we come your way again. How do we say it? Bye for now. Victoria? Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you you too. Thanks so much. Awesome time it has been with you on the World Cafe podcast today. Thank you for being there. You can catch me up on my social media handles Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram, all at Amakri Isoboye. Also, you can get copies of my books A Cocktail of Words, The Color of Words, my HR notebook and Hawkers Focus on God on Amazon and Roving Heights online bookstores. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel at the same address at Amakri Isoe. I love to hear from you and how this podcast has impacted you.